Well, hello. Uh, you should have seen the videos that I put on Google Classroom this morning, and there were a bunch of short little, like, two-minute videos uh, that talked about the elements of art in photography. And they gave a lot of good examples of what photography would look like showing like line or shape or form. Uh, because I'm going to go through this slideshow now. And this has the directions on what your actual assignment is going to be. Uh, so after I go through this, I'll give you some more examples and uh, tell you what you're going to need to do. In class today, the students, we took pictures in our classroom and outside the classroom and they're going to be taking pictures at home now and in their backyard um, so virtual students you'll be able to do that too so um, what we talked about in class today is instead of just taking pictures uh, you have to make a good photograph you really have to think about what you want uh, a picture of, you need to plan, pay attention to what's in your photograph, you know, and we're going to be looking at what elements of art we are really want to focus on. So you really have to, instead of just holding your camera up and snapping a picture, now you have to take some time and actually do some planning. Um, so this, this is an example of just kind of like a snapshot. There really isn't anything exciting about the picture. Just a bunch of people walking down the road. Um, but this next picture, the composition of how the picture is made up is a little bit more interesting. It kind of has that little boy. So he's more on the foreground. He's kind of looking. His head is turned. You kind of it's, it's going to make you wonder. You know, what is he looking at? Look, looking at what is what's going down the road? What are these people doing? It kind of tells a story. So um, sometimes you want your pictures to do that. Um, and this is talking about photography isn't just about the main subject of the picture. You, ha you have to also consider um, what else is in there. Uh, are there other things that might distract you from what you're trying to focus on? Um, you know, and what, what are the elements that you want to photograph? So we just have to be aware. So we're going to focus on some of the elements of composition, uh, line, color, shape, contrast, emphasis, texture, space. Uh, and I'm going to put a worksheet or at least uh, some definitions of the words you're going to have to focus on uh, on the Google Classroom too for you to look at. Um, but I'm going to show you some examples of photography that shows these elements because you're going to have to take two photographs of each element. So here, for example, is a picture of the boardwalk that I took. I like taking pictures in the morning. I take a lot of sunrise pictures uh, at the boardwalk or all around. But, you know, a lot of people will go to the boardwalk to take a picture of the water. And I've seen a lot of pictures where you're looking straight at the railing. Um, but this time when I was taking this picture, I kind of was down more towards the Voyager. And you can see that the boardwalk is now at an angle and it's curving. So this is an example of how the lines in the picture create a little more interest. They're curved lines of the boardwalk, the curve, the railing looks like it's curving off into the distance. So it's kind of leading your eye, you know, you're, you're wondering where this is leading to. So it, it just, because you're on a different angle, it's creating more of an interest. So when you are taking pictures, you should try to put yourself at a little bit more interesting angle sometimes instead of just straight at whatever you're looking at. Maybe you're looking, you're gonna look up at something. Maybe you're gonna look down at it. Maybe you're gonna turn yourself so you're at more of an angle instead of straight on. So that, that creates more interesting lines, okay? Um, this is just looking up at the ceiling of a building to create interest. You can see the interesting lines that were made um, in the architecture there. So if lines kind of create some type of a shape or pattern, that, that's very interesting to take a picture of. Uh, we're not sure what this was. We talked about it in class today. It looks like maybe a roulette wheel almost, or some kind of a, a ride. But sometimes lines can create a sense of movement. Um, which is kind of cool too. Uh, I took this picture of a, one of the sunrises, but the sky was obviously really red. 
Um, so, you know, that pop of color against the silhouette of the weeds creates a nice interest. So if you can take a picture of something that's very colorful, uh, that is good. Um, and even those uh, weeds, uh, the grasses in the front creates, there's a, they actually create some nice line. So for example, this photo could be used for color, but it also could be used for these interesting lines. So many of your pictures might be good for different elements of art, but you just have to decide which one you want to use it for. You can't use the same picture twice. Um, so you will eventually, you're going to need 14 different pictures because there are seven elements we're going to be focusing on and you're, and you're going to need two of each element, but I'll talk more about that in a little bit. Here's another picture that shows good color. So if you can find something that's, there's lots of different colors in a picture, that creates an interest. Uh, if you see any shapes, now this is a fancy church with lots of different shapes in the windows, and that makes a very interesting picture if the shapes create a pattern. Um, I took this picture of the leaf. I held the leaf up. You know, the sun was rising, and I really wanted to see the shape of the leaf. So, um, you know, it was I did this on purpose so I could see the shape of the leaf and the sun coming up behind it. So, you know, pick objects objects up, you know, look at them differently instead of just laying on the ground to create some kind of a focal point. This is just a cool image of some different shapes. If you see uh, many different shapes, maybe there is a whole bunch of leaves, for example, uh, in a row that would create a kind of unity uh, that they all are similar. So overlapping shapes creates interest. I took this picture of another sunrise with that silhouette of some different weeds and the contrast can be used to emphasize uh, focal point too. Maybe you wanna get on the ground, take some pictures. Um, this is showing like a contrast between like the soft grass and the, and the rocks, but it also could be used to show texture of the grass uh, which is really interesting. Contrast can be used in having, you know, turning on a light in one room and having some light on and it's dark in other areas. That can create interest. Color can create contrast. So if there's a, one color popping out against the background of another color, uh, that can be very interesting. Uh, if you put something really big next to something really small, that can create very much of an interest with the contrast to size. Um, emphasis, oop, let me go back one. Emphasis can be used to, you know, if you're really focusing in on one particular shape uh, where everything else can be blurry and with that one shape is in the uh, center, that is really cool. Oh, now I gotta go back the other way. Wrong arrow. Uh, I took this where I was waiting for the fisherman to kind of drift on by, waiting for him to get in the middle of the sunrise, kind of waited. He took a bunch of pictures as he was clicking, you know, I was clicking as he was going, going, going. I was hoping to get him perfectly centered in that ray of sun and, and eventually, eventually did get there. But I did have to take a lot of pictures and be patient waiting for that. So sometimes if you can position something, um, it creates a really nice emphasis. This is showing the detail up close of, you know, some kind of plant, but then the background is uh, out of focus. So that creates an emphasis too. I took this one. Once again, I was waiting for the fisherman to kind of float and I was waiting, I, I found these weeds and I knew that the sun would be rising uh, in between them. I was kind of created a nice frame that, that can be uh, very interesting when you use other objects, maybe branches um, looking through trees, leave branches to see something else that could be very, very interesting to create a emphasis. This is showing really cool texture of the trees and the brick. Uh, this is showing really cool texture of the rocks in Lake Huron. Um, so texture is really fun to take a picture of if you have any plants at home, and cactuses or anything that you could focus on that shows, that makes it really interesting. Now space is 
when you can kind of see through an area and you can see that things are in the foreground, middle ground, and background, this woman is going through her door. So you can see space. There's, there's stuff on the other side of the door. So if you can take a picture to show things in the foreground, middle ground, background, that shows space. That is something really good. I took this picture of in Palmer Park, but once again, you can see through that arch. You can see the water. You can see the land behind it. That arch is large in the front. So once you can see foreground, middle ground, background. So if you can see that in your picture, it's not just flat. That shows the, creates a sense of depth for space. Um, and then the last couple here, this is just uh, a really good photography tip uh, when you create what's called an interesting composition. That's really how, what's all the subject matter within whatever you're taking a picture of. When you see what's in your frame there, that's your composition. But in photography, sometimes it's better to not, a lot of times people just want to center uh, whatever they're taking a picture of and put it right big in the middle. But in photography, if you actually put it um, in, like, it's called the rule of thirds. So if you break the thing up into, you know, three sections and you have what you're interested in and you're photographing in that one third section along those lines, actually for photography, that's a better photograph. Okay. It creates more of an interest. Uh, so when you are taking your photographs, I'm going to be asking you to have at least two of your pictures using this rule of thirds. So having, you know, maybe you're going to take a picture of a leaf for, and to show texture, but maybe when you're taking the picture of the leaf to show texture, the leaf is in this one little, on this line of the one thirds. Now, if you're taking a picture with your, um, your phone, you can turn the grid on. If you go to settings on your phone, um, and go to your camera under the settings, you will see a little icon that says grid. It's probably off, but I always turn mine on on my phones. So every time I take a picture on my phone, I see this grid. And so sometimes you, you might want to, it's really good for centering things. Sometimes you do want things centered. But if you want to take a picture using this rule of thirds, you can get whatever you're taking a picture of in on one of these lines um, to make it more interesting. So on two of your 14 pictures, you I would like you to use this rule of thirds um, on two of them, okay? So this guy on the bike, yes, you could have centered it, but the fact that he's over on that line, it creates more of a, it's a better composition uh, in photography. Uh, here's a couple more examples for the rule of thirds. Here's this, uh, looks like a hawk. Like I say, the, art, the photographer could have centered the bird, but they purposely chose to put them on that one third line and that creates more of an, a better composition. Same thing with this cute little couple. Looks like they're creating a little engagement photo or something. Uh, once again, they could have been centered, but it's a better composition if you put the main subject along those lines there, the, the one third line. So let me tell you exactly what you're gonna need to do here. So, uh, let me go back. Oh, gotta go back. So um, basically you're going on a little scavenger hunt. You are gonna have to find photographs that represent the elements of art. And I'm gonna sh give you a worksheet that lists these. Uh, and you're going to need two photos for each element, okay? Um, not today. Uh, next class, I will post the directions and how I want you to submit these. Basically, you are going to be putting these on a Google slide. And we're going to create Google slides to and insert your pictures on there. But I'll, I'll do another video that explains that. Right now, I just really want you to go get take a bunch of pictures. Um, so let me show you, I'm going to X out of this. So I am going to be posting this worksheet. This is called the elements of art. 
And every time, like we're talking about making art, we already I already mentioned that. For example, the fish design, we looked at different types of lines. We maybe did some different shapes um, in our fish design. And we were looking at another principle of design, which was balance. But we're focusing on the principle, the elements of art and photography. So you are going to need two photos that show interesting lines in them. You're going to need two photos that show interesting pops of color. Uh, two that show shape and two that show form. Now, you might need to read these definitions, but shape would be something 2D and a form is 3D, okay? So uh, a person is a form, your dog is a form, okay? A car is a form because it's three-dimensional. Uh, if something is flat, um, it would be a shape, okay? So you need two shapes, two pictures that show shapes, two pictures that show forms, two that show texture, two that show value. Now value is kind of, if you can see light, medium, and dark values of a, a particular color, um, you could also turn a photo into black and white. And that's a really good way to show value, light, medium, and dark, and like the grays and the blacks, and the light, you know? Um, and then two that show space, kind of keeping in mind, like if you can see something in the foreground, middle ground, and background of your picture, that would be a good thing to show space. Okay, so I am going to post this as a, you know, thing, a worksheet that you can look at. But really what I want you to do now is, you know, look in your house. You know, do you have an apple? You know, you could, you know, food and a banana. You know, those are forms. You could, you know, position them in a little fruit bowl or something to take a picture of that. You know, you can go outside in your backyard and, you know, really get a close up of the bark of a tree or the leaves that have fallen on the ground for texture, you know, rocks, you know, fence lines. Um, gosh, absolutely anything. I told the kids in class today that you we could take and get all of these elements just within one classroom. OK, you could probably do it all within one room of your house. Um, look, think of all the objects that are laying around your house and toys and all different things. There's just tons of things. Um, but you just have to be, concentrate on what is it you're trying to take a picture of and just be aware of that. But go outside, you know, in your backyard and see what else you can find. So like I say, right now, for the next couple of days, just take a bunch of photos and then on Wednesday, I will do a little demo on how to make a Google slideshow and put these in it so that we can turn it in a Google Classroom. All right. If you have any questions, you know, email me. But um, I'll also see you guys on a Google Meet on Tuesday, too. All righty. That is it for today.